our final week, we're jumping forward in time to Elizabethan England with one of the most famous writers in the Western canon, William Shakespeare. In a way, though, we're also returning to where we started. The first myths we read were those of indigenous peoples, which had been written down much later by colonizers who invaded their lands, many during the era of Shakespeare. The first successful settlement of what is now the U.S. was the Jamestown Colony in 1607, named for one of Shakespeare's patrons, King James I of England. The play we're going to be looking at this week, The Tempest, was written during his reign and has colonization as its center, as it tells the story of a European man, Prospero, who is cast out from his homeland and then seizes control of an island with the aid of his vast knowledge and some magic. The only problem for Prospero is that the island is not uninhabited. Two supernatural creatures live there. One, Ariel, is a spirit who Prospero enslaves. He works tirelessly for Prospero with the promise that eventually he'll be free. The other is Caliban, who, unlike Ariel, fights his imprisonment and seeks to overthrow Prospero. What makes this dynamic more interesting is that neither side is portrayed as strictly villainous. Prospero is clearly the villain in Caliban's story, but he is the victim in his own. He's on the island in the first place because he was betrayed by his brother who took Prospero's rightful place as Duke of Milan and sent him, along with his young daughter, out to their deaths at sea. Only Prospero's power saved them, but these powers are the same that he used to enslave the island natives and that later he will use to shipwreck innocent men and send many to their deaths. Most of Shakespeare's plays are pretty easy to categorize. There are comedies where everyone gets married, tragedies where everyone dies, and histories where everyone is real, more or less. But The Tempest doesn't fit into those neat boxes. There's a romance and a wedding. There are some elements of farce and elements of tragedy. But it's also a study of aging. It's one of the last plays that Shakespeare wrote, and many argue that the writer himself is reflected in Prospero's journey. It's a study in power, what we can do and what we should. It's a study in love both the new love of a young romance and the weathered love of parents and lifelong friends. Critics often label this a problem play because of that complexity. As scholar W.W. W. Lawrence explains, a problem play is one in which a perplexing and distressing complication in human life is presented in a spirit of high seriousness, in a situation admitting of different ethical interpretations. The problem, he says, is not like one in mathematics to which there's a single true solution, but is one of conduct as to which there's no fixed and immutable laws. Often it cannot be reduced to any formula, any one question, since human life is too complex to be so neatly simplified. The Tempest is, in a lot of ways, a play about choices. As you read or watch this week, think about the choices each character makes and what they gain and what they lose and to think about how the other characters in the play view those choices. After all, one man's brave new world is another's stolen birthright. Since this play is not in your book, you have two options. You can either read the text online using the link that I posted on the homepage and in your week 11 module, or you can watch a film production of the play that's available through SEC's digital theater database. That too is linked in both places, although be aware that you will need to log into the library page with your SCC credential. Since this is the last week, you also have several deadlines looming. Your final discussion board is due on Sunday, as is your third essay and your reading journal. You need 10 full entries for full credit, but since we have 11 weeks total in this quarter, I'll give you extra credit if you do one for each week. Next week, your final exam will be available online Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. I've posted a study guide in your week 11 module and I'll give you full instructions next week. Just know that it's comprehensive so everything we've covered, including The Tempest, is fair game and it will be a mix of multiple choice, true false, and short answer questions. As always, let me know if you have any questions and for a final time, happy reading.